So today I'm gonna to compare two total stock market index funds. One, pretty much the largest index fund in the entire world, VTSAX, and its competitor from Fidelity, FSKAX. I have a bunch of videos about Vanguard and VTSAX. It's pretty much my primary go-to. And all the time I get questions about FSKAX and, you know, is it okay or should they leave Fidelity and come to Vanguard? And the fact that Fidelity has lower fees on some things, it's actually a great debate. And I wanna give you just the simple, very simple answer of why I go with VTSAX over its competitors. We'll look at their returns, their risk assessments, their fees, minimums to get in, everything that you need to know about both. Now on the surface, they're pretty much identical. Their returns, virtually identical. Their risk assessment, meaning like how risky is that investment, pretty much exactly the same. If you look at their top 10 holdings, those are virtually identical as well. With the top 10 companies being 20% of VTSAX's entire portfolio and FSKAX being right there at 19%. So that's identical as well. So where do the big differences lie? Well, first we can look at the price per share and that's gonna vary according to the time. Right now, VTSAX is about $59 and FSKAX is about $67. So right now, FSKAX, a little bit more expensive to buy one share, but that's not really that big of a deal. You look at their dividends, their dividend payout is pretty much the same exact 1.95 versus 1.96. So your dividends are gonna be about the same. If you look at the percentages, actually your dividend payment is gonna be more with FSKX because that one share price is more. So 1.9% of $67 is a little bit more than 1.9% of say $59. Another thing that people like to try and compare is something called the turnover rate. And pretty much what that means is how often are these funds buying and selling shares to fill their funds? So an actively managed fund averages about 63% yearly turnover, meaning they're replacing stocks and things like that at a 63% rate. FSKAX is pretty high for the index field at 17% compared to 4%. Now, what does this really mean for us? It doesn't really mean that much, but what it usually indicates is higher fees because the more you have to turn over stocks and bonds, the more buying and selling you have to do and the more managed it is, the higher the fees are going to be. But that's not actually the case here. One of the biggest arguments that I get against VTSAX is the fact that its expense ratio is higher than the one from Fidelity. Right now, which this could also change, VTSAX is 0.04%. Now what that means for you is that for every $10,000 invested, you have to give Vanguard $4. Now FSKAX, theirs is lower at 0.015, essentially 0.02%, a little more than half as much. Now what that means is that for every $10,000, you're gonna give them $1.50 as opposed to $4. So we're talking a little bit of money on a higher scale, but yeah, it is less. But so many people wanna make their decisions based on just that expense ratio. And to be honest, that difference of about $2.5 per $10,000 invested, isn't really a breaking point for me. The last thing that we could compare is the minimum investments. Now, for VTSAX, you need $3,000 to initiate that investment into that mutual fund. So before you have $3,000, you can't just go buy VTSAX with say $1,000. And that's a downside to VTSAX as well because with FSKAX, there is no minimum. So you're left saying to yourself, okay, if they return virtually the same, it's easier and cheaper to get into FSKX. Their dividend payment is about the same. Their fees are actually lower than, why is everybody talking about Vanguard? Why don't more people go with Fidelity? Well, I can't speak for everyone, but I'll give you my very, very simple answer. The first thing I really look at is the size of the company and how much money it's actually managing. Vanguard is managing over $5 trillion right now. And Fidelity comes in at about half of that with 2.5 trillion. And in VTSAX, there's $252 billion just in that one mutual fund. Like I said, making it pretty much the largest mutual fund in the entire world. FSKAX is about a quarter of that at $50 billion. So size and reliability, you know, that, that means a lot to me. But the last thing and, and the one thing I've talked so much about Vanguard is their company structure. So 
They are not a private company. They do not have outside investors. They are not public. So there's no back and forth or a need to please other people or to please investors. Vanguard is owned by its funds and its funds are owned by us. So essentially the shareholders are the true owners of Vanguard. There's no conflict of interest. Everything that Vanguard does is in the best interest of its investors. And a publicly traded company with outside investors, they can't say the same. When a company like Fidelity makes decisions, they have to think about all their investors. And for example, like why are their fees so low on this particular fund? Well, they could take the low fees because what they wanna do is they have to try and compete with Vanguard. They have to get you in there and then hopefully they're gonna make their money on you in other ways. And that's not to downplay Fidelity. They have some awesome, awesome things inside their portfolio. One off the top of my head is their HSA program. If you're looking for a great HSA, they are a great company to go with. But for long-term index fund investing, I just like the company structure of Vanguard. So to answer the one question I get most frequently in my Vanguard videos, Brad, should I take my money out of Fidelity and move it to Vanguard? Or should I take it out of anywhere and move it into Vanguard? You know, definitely you don't need to do that. It's not a matter of is Fidelity better than Vanguard. It's a matter of which one do you like? Which one are you comfortable? Which one did you start with? Which company is inside your 403B or your 401K or something like that? There's, there's really no difference if you're sticking with any of those total stock market index funds. It's the same for us in the Pew Pew world, like a Glock guy versus SIG guy. There really is no big difference. It's just which one you prefer. In this case, it's Fidelity or Vanguard. If this information helped you guys, please give the video a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing for more content just like this. If you haven't seen that Vanguard playlist, it's right here. And down here, I'll give you some more of my investing tips. And until I see you guys on the next one, stay positive, work really, really hard, always. Be kind to one another. Hope you have yourself an amazing day and an even better tomorrow.